Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live studio show here on MXGP TV with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland, where today we are at the 14th round of the FIA Motocross World Championship, the MXGP off Trentino, for the first of five races in the next 18 days. Uh, our first guest is in the house, uh, Jeff Jansen, and he is the team owner for uh, Hoss Tetley Yamaha. And uh, we've also got Isaac Gifton coming in, and right at the end of the show, Ben Watson. But before we meet our first guest, Lisa. <laughs> I bet you're already counting down the days. We've finally made it to here. I know. 18 days ago before Mantua 2. I bet you can't wait, can you? I, you know, it's been pretty full on, hasn't it? But we've still got so much to get through in such a short period of time. It's kind of the end of season, but it's not quite the end yet, is it? <laughs> no. So uh, ask me again in a couple of weeks. So. In a couple of weeks or a couple of days. A couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, before we do go anywhere, um, just want to say uh, our camera guy here, Yay. Bozas, Happy birthday, sir. It's his, <laughs> it's, it's 50th. It's yeah, it's 29th today. So uh, <laughs> good to see you and uh, hope you enjoy your day. Get back to work. <laughs> anyway, let's meet our first guest, shall we? Uh, Jeff Janssen from uh, Hostetler Yamaha is the team owner there. And uh, yeah, first of all, uh, ex-rider turned racing coach, now team manager. Uh, is this the first kind of uh, high profile team that you've uh, taken on and managed? No, it's not a high profile team, but we do it like um like back to the basics uh, the main important thing is that the riders do good that we have good bikes we don't have a big truck or something and we we prepare to uh, pretty good in this winter and uh, we, we we work one-on-one -on -one. and um yeah that was the first step in for this year yeah and obviously in at mxgp which is what i meant with the, the profile thing but how did the team come about was it just something you'd been thinking about for a few years or you just thought last year you know what I can run something here. No, I was just uh, working last year with uh, with a Yamaha team from Switzerland, from Hostetler sponsored, and it was with Peter Pollack yeah. and uh, Cyril Genot, some other guys were in that team, and then uh, we start w talking about the next years, and they want to continue working with me, and then we set up a team around Peter with some um, another European guy, Joel Elsner, Swiss guy, and then once in a while it came like uh, Hostetler with uh, hey we got uh, Gio hey we got Tonus can you take him uh, pff, yeah pff, yeah okay. that's how it, it happened here wow. on a Sunday night yeah. wow. well you mentioned you got two riders two MXGP riders yes. one of which is Arno Tonus hasn't been the easiest of seasons for him has it this year uh, what do you make of it so far um, Arno is a very lovely personality and he's a very very quiet person real on on the floor with mm. the feet and um, when he's got a good flow, he's 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 a pretty good. He's really he's really good skilled rider. And um, sometimes he just needs a the mental situation is very strong and very important for him. And now he's getting his form back, and he's struggling because he had this concussion in the middle of this of the sun this uh, summer. Yeah. And then it was a break for him, and um, it was uh, pretty hard to take off these days. But now he's coming back, and uh, I think his uh, results last week were pretty good again. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, he has been on the podium here in the past, hasn't he? Are you hoping that he could perhaps use that for his advantage and just finish off the season strongly? I mean, we've got three GPs here, haven't we? Yeah, we still got five GPs left, and I think uh, he's going to be uh, doing an uh, average um, riding at the moment, and he's feeling comfortable, and he gets two results, two results, two results. Mm -hmm. His his form is coming now. He's, he's a little bit late mm. because of this break in the summer, but he's doing better already now. Yeah, well, he yeah. was tenth overall last week in Spain, yeah. so that's yeah. already uh, a consistent. Marked. Yeah, pretty close to the six, seven, eight guys because yeah. they're all close. Yeah. It's a very tough competition, MS1 this year, MSGP class. Mm -hmm. well, what about Valentin Guio? Because obviously, um, again, another rider that on paper doesn't look like he's had the best season, but his season has been interrupted by your Swiss yes. championship commitments yes. as well, hasn't yeah. it? But, yeah. um, you know, it's obviously not easy going backwards and forwards like that, is it? Especially now with the level so high. No, because if, uh, Valentin is not uh, the super athlete, to be honest, and we, we all know <laughs> that. And he, he can whip, though. <laughs> yeah, he can whip, and he can ride a bike. He's got really good skills, and we saw it in the, in the Mexico Nations. He got a whole shot, and just one guy came by. There was Hurlings, nothing to shame about, mm. and he stayed second. He went second. Mm. But well, he, did, he did the Swiss Championship, and it was a pretty uh, tough race for him because he always did two classes. He rode MX2 class, stepped on other bikes, did the MX1 class. And he did one hour racing, mm. one hour break, one hour racing again. Old school. Yeah, <laughs> but proper. Yeah, yeah. But again, just talking about the nations, obviously this is the race that stand, stood out yes. for him this year. He got a whole shot, finished second, like you said, to Jeffrey Hurlings. That's uh, not bad going all by itself. But when you see performances like that from Valentin, 
Do you still believe then, after seeing that, with the next few races, because he's now in MXGP for the last few rounds. Yes. When you see that, do you think, actually, he can be there or thereabouts, sort of like 10, or you know, around 15 to 10? Because on the team report last week, he was like, yeah, 10, 15 would be excellent for him. Yeah. Can he break the top 10, do you think, or not? Or is he a 10th place, 12th it, place guy? He... On MX Destination, all his family, his friends were there. He felt really comfortable. And I think that's very important for him to have these surroundings with people. And when he got a good start or a good mood in the morning, then it starts like completely different than the other days where he's like struggling. But last week, it was pretty good also. On the 17, he catched up till the 15, 14 guys. His speed was pretty good. But it didn't affect on the results. He couldn't see it. And the yeah. second motor, he was not getting the flow. Sure. But it's the the difference between a good motor and a less good motor is pretty big. But if he gets a good start, then you think he yes. can do that yes, kind of performance? Yes. Then he then he have the uh, the spirit and he, the will to to finish it till the end. Finish it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Superhero thing going on there. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Petr Pollock? He's having um he's having his best season in MX2, isn't yes, he? Yes. But yes. what what do you think he needs to do to sort of break into the top 15 or even the top 10? Peter is a very um, quiet personality, and, and you see it in his time practice. He he's like a diesel. He builds it up too slow. He's always steady, always in control. Don't make any mistakes. Okay, on the end of the race, he makes also the best lap times. On the end of the time practice, he makes the best time practice lap times. And that's uh, he's not a typical MX2 rider because mm -hmm. they're like young and fresh, and they want to go the first laps. How old is he? How old? Twenty. It's okay. Yeah. And obviously, looking at the, the results, because this is, I think, his third year full as, a, as an yes, MXG rider, yes, and yeah. it is his best season, as Lisa said. Yes. As a, you know, obviously, you also are a ride coach as well, and, you know, you've helped riders over the years. As your role as a, as a ride coach, take your manager's hat off or a team owner's hat off. How are you able to help someone like Peter Pollock to sort of find that next step and br break into that next kind of uh, group of riders? Yeah, we, we try to give, give him a good mindset and make him ready and prepare him to be like hungry for the first laps because that's the problem with his racing career. He's just the first laps. He's not on it. And he's always got a first motor that's decent, like 20 or 19. And the second motor is always better because then I push, 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 and he gets a little bit more angry and he puts more into it, the first yeah. laps, and he gets like a 15 or a 16. But you you have to imagine we have like I say always like twelve factory riders yeah. MX2. So what you come up next, 13, 14, 15, 16 is already pretty good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It is it is a tough in the MX2 class. Okay, well look, we are just about out of time, but uh what can you hope for uh for the three riders over the next five races? Um we hope that we do consistent um uh good results and the guys stay healthy and uh we have a good season on the end and um, we end it strong. Okay. Uh, can we do that again? Come in? <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood, exactly. Well, look, uh, Jens, thanks for uh, joining us and uh, all the best for the riders for the rest of the weekend and, of course, for the last five races in the next just about two and a half weeks. Yes. Uh, thanks for coming. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, our next guest is in, getting ready to talk to us. But before we meet Isaac, let's catch some MX2 action. Here's race two highlights from a week ago in Spain. Man, what an atmosphere that was there. Enjoy. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in MX2. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in MX2 Race 2 at this Into Xanadu Arroyo Molinos circuit. Vial once again, hits in second, yeah, Guadagnini yeah, third. Yeah, yeah. the outside of the Italian to move into third. A change of lead. Yago Hitz leads on the opening lap. He's just found his way past the out. Oh, Guadagnini throws it away. That's in the dip. Just after the FC Moto step down. And uh, Renault alongside Tom Vial. And for the first time, Maxim Renault, the championship leader, heads the defending champion. And he's all over.
over the back of him, isn't he? He's good through here as well. And he used this line to pass me out, and he's alongside his teammate to take over the lead. And on lap 13, Renault is your new leader. And that will be the Grand Prix victory as it stands at the moment. Here's Ruben Fernandez, currently in fifth place now. Found his way past Hoffer and DeWolf. Good to see the Honda 114 rider putting on this display in front of the home fans. Throw a blank over these three at the moment. Two minutes plus two to go. Still undecided. Gets to the inside here and he goes down. He's in third, but out of the fight for the win. Renault will win the race. And he wins the Spanish Grand Prix. In that first moto, I took a good start, but Tom was uh, fast and I couldn't really find any place to pass, you know, so I just sat there and uh, satisfied myself. In second moto, I could try, uh, I could find one good line just before the race. I passed uh, both Tom and uh, Iago on this one, so I'm really happy. For the fourth time this year, Maxim Renault on the top step of the podium. He does it in Spain with a second and a first, edging out Tom Vial and Jed Beaton. Overall in the championship, Maxim Renault now 108 points clear of his closest rival, Iago Kiertz. Hello everyone, welcome back to our live studio show here on MXGP TV with me, Paul Malin and Lisa Leyland. Our second guest is now in from Team Diga Pro Cross Gas Gas Factory Racing, Isaac Gifting. Of course, he's from Sweden and uh, apparently, hey son. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello, exactly. Well, apparently that's uh, hello in Swedish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before, because I've got a Swedish director, he was telling me, say, tell him, good doggy. Good doggy. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, that sounds like I'm praising my pet. Not good day. He was saying, tell him it's good day. I was like, nah. nah yeah, nah. good dog. Good dog. <laughs> See, there is a brain in here. Nah. Anyway, welcome to our live studio show once again. No singing this time, by the way. No singing this time. Um, <laughs> let's talk about your season. Uh, you joined MX2 midway through the championship last year, finished 12th overall in the campaign. Uh, you've been in from the start this year. You're 15th. But I know you were injured at the start of the season. Is that where the problems kind of started, really? Um... Yeah, of course, a little bit. I mean, the beginning was a struggle because of that injury, but yeah, also, I mean, I've been I've been searching a lot this year, like for for half of the season with uh, with the bike and with my riding, and I haven't been where I want to be, mm. and I haven't really found that feeling that I had last year when I came in because then then I was feeling really good, and this feeling I haven't really had for for the whole year, and uh, we made some changes like midway through the season and like the last few races I think I've been I've been feeling a little bit better and also it's been showing a bit more on the on the track like I've been running a little bit more up there and showed the speed sometimes for sure I made a lot of mistakes but like I'm I'm a little bit getting back there I feel mm. just like I, I missed a lot when I haven't been running in the front for such a long time you you miss a lot you know just uh, on that foot injury at the beginning of the year um, because I think it was just before Russia and then you had that crash. Did you find that the first few races that you were trying to race yourself back into kind of fitness as well and kind of that was maybe preventing you from developing the bike or looking for the things that you were looking for or not really? Yeah, also, I mean, I missed time on the bike, of course, mm. like the whole week before Russia. And uh, I mean, between the races, I couldn't really practice. So... It was more just yeah racing and racing and racing and of course that doesn't make you better no. and it makes you also a bit stressed and then when you also when you in in Russia like with the foot and everything it was okay and I I, I was riding okay I mean I couldn't finish top ten almost but then I crashed out like both races mm. and that also creates some kind of stress you know in the beginning of the season and that just follows through all the races. Mm. 
Well, you mentioned that these past few rounds you are finding your form again. Good result in Os. You seem to be back to your usual self in Sardinia, fifth overall. Did it feel good to be back up there at the sharp end? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it felt more felt more normal, let's say. Uh, like all the other races, normally I've been yeah pretty disappointed. So it's been nice to, to get some races where I feel like I, I did something good. And uh, also now in Spain, in the first moto there, uh, I actually had a pretty good start, like fourth or something, and I was running up there for, for quite some time. Uh, for sure, I got a little bit unfocused in the end and I lost a few spots, but I was still like five, six for a long time and I felt like I, I, can, I can run more close to those guys mm. Than, mm. than what I've been doing for the first part of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know you said you got a good start in Spain, but now that you are back to full fitness, is... Um, is your starts perhaps something that are letting you down a little bit? Yeah. And if you get the starts, then you can be up at the front again? For sure, for sure. And I think the main reason is actually because I'm qualifying so bad. Mm. Mm. Like my qualifyings are disaster every time. And I'm like really always trying to figure out something where I can qualify because how bad I even qualify, I'm always so much better in the motos mm. normally. Mm. Mm. And I just had one good qualifying in Latvia. And for the rest, I've been starting from like outside of 15, you know, mm. yeah. and it's difficult. Some tracks you can do it, uh, like Spain, you can make a good start anyway. Well, you mentioned Spain, uh, that first race, you know, you did make a good start and you looked good, actually. Again, same like Sardinia and, uh, you know, the times that we saw you in Os. But, I mean, did you like the track as well there? Did you have a good feeling with everything there? And was it helped by the fact that you got that good start? You... Because you do mentally, don't you, go on a different level when you make a good start. It kind of helps pick you up another 10 percent, 15 percent. Yeah, for sure you do. And then you're you're more free, you know, you're not being holed up by another rider. You're just going with the fast guys and you just you can you can look the lines, you can follow them and you always go faster then. Mm. And yeah, I felt pretty good. The track was great and bike was feeling was feeling all right and everything. So, yeah, the I made for sure way too much mistakes which made me drop down a few positions mm. but uh, I think that's the lack of like being in the front for a long time sure mm. Mm. well what happened in Spain because we did see you in pit lane in about race. midway through the race in that second race yeah in the second one then I, I crashed on the first lap I went into I think Benistant actually Right. I went down and then I tried to charge up it was going pretty well like I catched up quite a lot of riders mm. But then I made a another crash, uh, a little bit bigger, and everything got bent. And uh, uh, I tried to fix it in the pit lane, but mm. then uh, we dnf that race. All right, well, look, we are just about out of time. But real quickly, last year you came here, got a third in the final race of the season. A track you like and looking forward to for the next three races? Yeah, for sure. I love this place. Cool. I, I hope I can repeat it. Okay, well, look, yeah. uh, Isaac Gifton, thanks for joining us. Uh, all the best here for the next three races and the two more in, uh, in Mantova. Thank you very much. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of the season. Uh, right, let's uh, catch up with our next guest. But before we do, here's some highlights from MXGP Race 2 in Spain one week ago. And I said it before, what an atmosphere in MXGP. It was electric, off the scale. Enjoy. Fly Racing, 15 second board is up for the final time today. for a 26 after getting held up in uh, turn three, bottom of the first hill. Jonas looks across, sees Hurling charging down the inside. Oh, almost coming together. The two KTMs, oh! Hurling's almost involved in another finish line jump. Crash. Geiser takes over. Well, but actually, Hurling's Takes over second. Oh, 
and he sides his way up the inside. He had a look last time around. This time around, there was no mistaking. Hurlings found a way through. He now leads. Once again, how much can Prado take of this? Says Geiser up the inside. Controls the line beautifully. Takes over second. Tell you what, teammates, at it again. Wow, here we go. Oh, and he has found his way past Siwa, Roman Fevre, towards the end of lap 15. All of a sudden, he's up to seventh place. Oh, sure, they touch there as well. Front and back wheel. I really did well to keep it up on two wheels. Jeffrey Hurlings, Red Bull KTM, wins race two. He wins the Spanish Grand Prix. Tim Geiser will cross the line second. Jorge Prado will cross the line third. And that will be good enough for second overall for the Spaniard. crazy you know uh, first moto I had a good jump but then uh, I got outrun but uh, second moto I didn't have a great jump either but I was around fifth or fourth through the first turn and then I just could click off riders and uh, halfway the race I managed to take over Corky for the lead and uh, another overall so number 96 so uh, the 100 is coming closer one day. <laughs> You're right there. Big cough, big Me? <laughs> deep breath. I yeah. was clearing my throat. I was getting ready to go live. I know. I think everyone else heard you as well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, hello everyone. Welcome back to our live studio show here. We're at the MXGP of Trentino in Italy for uh, the first of three of this triple header. Ben Watson, Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP is with us. And uh, Ben, good to see you again. Um, you know the drill. We'll talk about the season briefly. Uh, it's your rookie season in MXGP. Is it? sort of been tougher than you originally expected it would be because obviously you're a big lad going from mx2 to mxgp it's very easy to go oh yeah the big bike will suit me well but how's it been for you um i've got yeah mixed feelings about the season um i've been happy at times and then other times i felt i know a little bit disappointed but i think the most difficult thing was for example here my final gp i won i was second overall i was five or six times on the box and then you know to go to mxgp and be fighting just to get in that top 10 yeah it's hard to accept the the difference you know but i should actually be you know happy with with the top 10 in mxgp and especially in my first season so it's been up and down mm. but overall yeah not too bad what's been the most difficult has it been the intensity uh the early pace of everybody or is it like the push at the end of the race for instance or bike setup i don't know um yeah a lot with the bike i would say more than anything um are you missing saturday then as yeah. a rookie yeah big time Honestly, like the, the first laps and everything, I feel the guys around me now are a little bit more in control and, and clever. Mm. In MX2, sometimes I felt it was a bit crazy and not really my style, and I struggled in the beginning of the races. But no, in MXGP, I've been feeling quite good in, mm. in that area, and honestly, the, the racing with the guys has been good. Yeah. But um, with bike setup, sometimes I've been struggling there and, and the qualifying. It's just been my biggest downfall mm. at every single every single GP. Mm. Yeah, well, you did pick up a couple of top 10 overalls, uh, Italy and in England. Um, fifth overall in Holland, but that must have been quite a good confidence boost for you. It was just your third race on a 450. Yeah. Uh, us, obviously, there was a few guys, you know, crashing, and, and I just put in two solid, consistent mm -hmm. results and came out with a great overall. But honestly, no, I've had a few good races. Um, I've been in the top 10 a good few times, and when I... When I'm there, I, I do, mm -hmm. I feel good. Um, 
but honestly the qualifying I've been mm. majority of the time outside the top 15 mm. even outside the top 20 so when the start is not really you know so equal then it, it makes a, for a really hard mm. GP. Well, you said you, you feel good when you're there. I mean, here, you look good. You look relaxed and you look like you're enjoying it. Yeah, no, definitely. When I'm when I'm around these guys, yeah. like I do, it feels better. It's way more enjoyable when you're with, you know, the top names. And, Does it lift you up? Yeah, and, and you just get in the flow and you just go. You enjoy it yeah. so much more, even if there's more pressure in that, you know, range and, and the guys around you, you're fighting with people with <laughs> 10 world titles. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, crazy. Moving on to Sardinia, sixth overall. Was that a case of perhaps just being a bit more comfortable, more familiar with the sort of softer terrain there? Yeah, and honestly, like my my qualifying wasn't good, but then I the start was was fair. You know, you could go left, right, and still take a whole shot, and and that was the thing. I took two really good starts mm. and uh, just rode me in races. But honestly, I didn't ride good in Sardinia. I didn't feel good at all. I was struggling with with a few things with the temperature and. Mm. That was a tough GP for me. To come out with sixth, I was yeah quite surprised, yeah. to be honest. I'll tell you one place where you didn't uh, struggle, Mantova, but across <laughs> the nations. Uh, yeah. The first time you could celebrate with a bronze medal on the podium with the team, because you couldn't do that a couple of years ago, and no. you came away with a gold plate, MXGP class winner. Yeah, How no, cool was that? That was amazing. I had a, an incredible weekend. Obviously, a lot of guys were saying, no, I'm not going to go, don't want to take the risk, and you know, there's still a long way to go with the season, but... I just saw it as a good opportunity to go and, and try and prove myself. And, you know, for Team GB, everyone, you know, will appreciate if you go there and you give it all for, for the country. So mm. I did that. I took the opportunity. And, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy that I went and did it. And obviously, again, going back to that setup thing, we're going to be in Mantova for two more rounds, the last two rounds. It was also the perfect opportunity, especially on Saturday, to get some extra settings to take the pressure off in the free practice and time practice when we go there for those last two races, you think? Yeah, definitely. But you even see on Saturday, like I I did the one uh, qualifying warm session in the morning mm -hmm. and then we had the qualifying race in the afternoon and I felt good. I got out, I got a good start. I did my own riding and then I started to feel like not stiff, but just getting tight and just not loose. We're struggling mm -hmm. with a few things. And and that's the story of my GPs this year. Like the the time just from qualifying straight into the race, I'm just not feeling myself straight mm -hmm. away. And you see, then yeah, on Sunday I was <laughs> was already a lot better. How was that? You, no one knew. No one knew. No, you no. had the goal play. Even you. <laughs> I didn't know myself. No. And then when they passed me, I was like, yeah, wow, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Has that been nailed to the wall yet? <laughs> no, no. I've got everything at home, but it'll, uh, I'll definitely save that one. All right, well, look, more from Ben in just a moment, but uh, let's just give you another reminder of MXGP TV and uh, where, how you can watch it and all the rest of it. Uh, obviously, we had a new platform this year, new era, new everything, new look and everything else. Really easy to navigate. And joining us live on the build this weekend, we have the final round of women's. We've got round six of the 125 European Championship presented by FMF Racing as well. And so, uh, and if you are watching live on the studio show here you know that you can watch live or on demand so if you miss the racing tomorrow you can always play catch up so uh, enjoy if you haven't got it and i'm sure there are plenty of deals to be had this time of year don't tell anybody i told you <laughs> so though um <laughs> but uh ben back to you uh, oh yeah uh, yeah lisa ben i mean i know you mentioned it earlier last year here final race of the year and your mx2 <laughs> career yeah finished it off rounded it off with a massive win I mean, coming back, you must have such fond memories of this this place. Yeah, definitely. When I come here, I mean, you don't even need to be racing or here for the event, and it's already an yeah. amazing place and atmosphere. So the weather, everything, just to come back and, yeah, just look back on these memories is, yeah, these were days I won't forget. But the the track, I mean, I've, just, I've been out on the track looking today. It looks a lot softer now. Uh, it seems like they've brought in more softer. Is that going to change things, you think, uh, compared to how it was last year? Obviously, you're on a 450 as well. Yeah. So that'll be different. Um, I don't think so. I mean, always underneath the track's hard. It's, it's uh, you see it gets very square edge bumps and pretty slippery, but it's always been the same, pretty loose when they rip it. And if they, they get a lot of water, it does get pretty technical and some good ruts there. I think if they've added more soil or some more dirt, mm. it'll only get more technical, so that'll be good. Okay, just real quick before we go, uh, goal for the last five races? Yeah, I want to just feel myself. Mm. Honestly, I've not been, been really happy with my feeling, even if I've had a good result or not. Just sometimes I want to just feel a bit more free and mm. just enjoy my riding a little bit more. So if I can, can get out there, just get some good starts and run up, up front with the guys know who are, are fighting for podiums i just enjoy it a lot more so that's my goal just to, to go out there and be myself
Cool. All right, Ben Watson, thanks for joining us. Thank uh, and that's it. We're out of time here on our studio show today, but we will be back in just over an hour and a half's time with the first race of the day, WMX Race 1. That'll be 105. And then, of course, we've got EMX 125 Race 1, and we finish off with the final two races of the day. We'll be back tomorrow live on MXGP with MX2 Time Practice time practice from MXGP. Of course, all the racing from MX2 and MXGP. So from me, Lisa, Ben, and thanks to our other guests today as well. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow and uh, happy birthday to this guy here once more. Bozaz, you're a good man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye for now.